If symmetry implies entropy, then broken symmetry implies information. Welcome to the Bottom Turtle Channel. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm theoretical physicist Dr. Shannon Ray, and in my last video, I made the argument that the true nature of entropy is symmetry, and that this new insight has the potential to revolutionize our understanding of the foundations of physics. So in today's video, I want to continue my argument for the revolutionary potential of this observation by examining the true nature of information in terms of symmetry breaking. That is, I want to substantiate the claim that if there is a broken symmetry, then there is information. This is revolutionary because the concept of symmetry breaking is foundational to many fields in physics, including quantum field theory, the standard model of particle physics, the Higgs mechanism which explains why there's mass in the universe, and grand unified theories which is the favorite topic of conversation of this guy. The concept of symmetry is important to the foundations of physics because of how we formulate our theories using Lagrangians, the least action principle, and transformations of the Lagrangian that leave it invariant, which is the nature of symmetry transformations as I explained in my last video. And this is why you're going to want to watch this video, because I can break down ideas that are at the foundation of our most fundamental understanding of physics in the universe using simple examples involving circles, the nature of communication, and the nature of information, which we all have experience with every single day. In other words, if you know what it's like to communicate with somebody or to receive information or handle information, then you can understand the concept of symmetry breaking. And that's what I want to show you in this video. But before we get into it, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with a friend, especially if that friend is a physicist or mathematician. Because at the end of the day, this is a research channel, and I'm looking to spread my ideas, find collaborators, and to become independently funded so that I can focus on the research that I think is most important and share it with you. So if you find the ideas shared in this video interesting, don't forget to comment in the comment section. And remember, every time you like, share, and subscribe to the channel, it's like donating to my research fund. And every donation helps. So with that, let's get into it. understand the nature of information and substantiate my claim that the existence of information implies the existence of a broken symmetry, we first want to look at what it means to gain information during a communication using information theory. So in 1948, Claude Shannon introduced information theory in his paper, A Mathematical Theory of Communication, where he defines information gained during a communication or observation as the amount of surprise. So what does that tell us? It tells us that to gain information, you must be surprised. So let's set up a basic argument. One, we know that information gained is the amount of surprise. So from that, we know that two, to be surprised, there must be ignorance or uncertainty. And in my last video, I pointed out that entropy is ignorance and ignorance implies symmetry. So that means that to be surprised, there must be symmetry. So from there, we know that three, if you can predict the future, then you are not surprised because you already had full information. And so what does that tell us? In conclusion, we know that to have information is to be able to predict the future. That is part of the nature of information, the ability to predict the future. So to see how predicting the future is associated with broken symmetry, let's look at an example. Imagine that Alice and Bob are in a room, and in that room there's a table with 10 objects on it. Now, imagine that Alice wants a specific item on the table, but she only gives Bob the information, hand me the object on the table. With that information, Bob has a 1 in 10 chance of guessing the correct item that Alice wants. Now imagine that she tells Bob, hand me the green object on the table. Since there are only three green objects on the table, Bob has gone from a 1 in 10 chance of guessing the right item to a 1 in 3 chance of guessing the right item. And now imagine that she says, hand me the green pointy object on the table. With that information, there's only one object that fits that description, and so Bob now knows with complete certainty that if he takes the pointy green object and hands it to Alice, that he'll hand her the right object that she's looking for. So what does this tell us? It tells us the less information we have, the more objects there are that are consistent with the given information. And we already discussed in the last video how the information given is our macro state 
and all the things consistent with that macro data are its microstates, and that the Boltzmann's entropy quantifies the amount of symmetry associated with macro data, and that is called the multiplicity. So in our example, the first information Alice gave us had a multiplicity of 10, and then 3, and then 1. And with each additional high resolution information given, as Alice got less vague, then Bob's probability of correctly picking the right object increases. And when she gives him the information for which there's only one object that's consistent, now he has perfect certainty that he'll handle the right object. And in quantum mechanics, we call a state such as this a pure state and has zero entropy or zero uncertainty. So what does this example tell us about the nature of information? It shows us that information breaks symmetry by creating a border between that which is consistent with said information from that which is not consistent with said information. This in turn reduces the number of things that are symmetric, thus increasing the chance of likely predicting the future. And as I stated in my last video, the examples I give are not rigorous derivations of the idea. They are merely how I build intuitions that I then use for my calculations. So to further substantiate my claim that information coincides with broken symmetry, I wanna look at another example. Imagine you're looking down at a two-dimensional surface where every single point on that surface is perfectly identical to every other point, meaning that you can't distinguish them from each other at all. And imagine that this surface is so large that it looks like it goes on to infinity and you can't see its edges. Now, if someone were to take this surface and do something to it, like if they were to pull it from left to right or they were to rotate it about a point, because every single point on the surface is identical, you can't tell that anything's happening at all. And if you've been watching this channel, you know that transformations in which you can't tell anything is happening at all correspond to symmetry transformations. So for this surface, you have a symmetry. Now, imagine that given this surface, you take your finger and you put it down perpendicularly on the surface so that you can identify a point. Then say that you have some rods that you call X and Y, and you place Y in the vertical direction, X in the horizontal direction, and you place it at the center of this point that you've chosen. Given these two rods that you've laid down on the surface, you can now define a distance from its origin, which we call R. And with these rods, we can now make the statement, let X squared plus Y squared equal R squared. And what this is, is the equation for a circle. This is constraint data, that distinguishes the points that are all equal distance from the origin from all other points. Given this constraint information, we have broken the symmetry of the system such that all the points that are consistent with the constraint data are now distinguishable from all the points that are not consistent with the constraint data. And from here, we can treat this constraint data as our macro state and all of the points that are consistent with that macro data as our microstates, or that which is symmetric with the macro data. Now that we have this set of points that are distinguishable, if someone were to drag this two-dimensional surface from left to right, you can now see the circle move as it's translated, which means that you can tell a transformation has happened, which demonstrates that the symmetry is broken. This is equally true if we were to pick a random point on the surface and then rotate the surface with respect to that random point. Now you can see the circle that is consistent with the constraint data, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, rotate as the surface rotates. And so what we know is that the constraint information given by x squared plus y squared equals r squared created a demarcation between points that are consistent with the information from those that aren't, thus breaking the symmetry. And so we see here how the information associated with the constraint data breaks symmetry. But what would happen if you change your perspective by simultaneously moving to the right at the same speed as the surface is being pulled? Then the circle would look fixed and you would be in the same situation as before where you can't tell that anything is happening. Therefore, to truly break symmetry, something needs to be fixed while the transformation is happening. And that's what we'll look at in our next example. So in the last example, we showed how the constraint data let x squared plus y squared equals r squared broke the symmetry of the two-dimensional surface and created a circle of points that are all consistent with that information. But now we have a new symmetry, 
which is, as I pointed out in the last video, if we were to rotate the circle about its axis at its center, either clockwise or counterclockwise, we can't tell that anything is happening at all. And we call this a U1 symmetry, and it's usually associated with phase. Given that, we now have a new symmetry associated with all of the points consistent with the constraint data let x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And that would have to be the case because if we are able to distinguish one point from another as the circle is rotating about its axis, that would imply that there's some additional information that allows the different points on the circle to be distinguishable from each other. If we want to create additional information so that we can distinguish one point from another, we must break symmetry. And to do that, you might think to yourself, I'll just make one of the points blue so that when I rotate the circle, I can see the point rotate, thus I know a transformation is happening. But like before, you can always change your perspective by simultaneously rotating it with the circle, thus making the circle appear fixed, and again, you're in the same situation as before where you can't tell that anything is happening. So to truly break symmetry, imagine we have a fixed red point, such that when we rotate the circle, the blue point rotates as the circle rotates, but the red point remains fixed. With this fixed red point, we create a reference frame that allows us to observe an angle from that fixed red point, thus allowing the different points on the circle to be distinguished from each other. By creating a reference frame, we create something that allows us to compare and contrast, thus creating distinguishability, and thus breaking symmetry. And the additional information associated with that broken symmetry is the angle theta from the fixed red point. To drive the point home that the nature of information is predicting the future and breaking symmetry, let's look at the nature of communication. So how do words work? When you use a word, it conjures ideas in the space of concepts that are consistent with that word while excluding ones that are not. For example, imagine you're trying to communicate an idea to another person, and that person has no idea what you want to communicate. In this case, the initial state of the other person's mind is one in which all ideas are equally possible or symmetric because you haven't given them any information. Now imagine you tell them you're thinking of a person. Suddenly, a border is created between the space of all possibilities and the space of all people, thus breaking symmetry between the space of all possibilities and the space of all, all people. Now imagine that you give them the additional information of American person. This now contracts from the space of all people to the space of all American people. Each time you give additional information, you are excluding more things and reducing the size of the space of possibilities, thus making the other person less ignorant about what you're thinking of. This is how context works. The more context you give, the less vague you are. And this is also why more information is related to higher resolution. The more precise you are, the more the other person can resolve and see what you're thinking of in their own mind. If a word does not have the capacity to exclude or demarcate a space by creating a border, then it does not have information. This is what happens when words mean something different to each individual and there's no objectivity. If you can't predict how a word will program someone in the space of concepts, then it can't be used to communicate. So what did we accomplish in this video? We gave a clear conceptual framework of the nature of information in terms of predicting the future and creating borders or constraints that break symmetry. That is, we showed that the nature of information is to separate and exclude, thus creating distinguishability. And that is why broken symmetry implies information, because the essence of symmetry is characterized by a lack of distinguishability under symmetry transformations, and information is characterized by distinguishability or separation. What this ultimately does is it creates a binary between the concepts of symmetry and broken symmetry, entropy and information, ignorance and knowledge, uncertainty and predictability, and indistinguishability from distinguishability. So all of these concepts are synonymous with respect to each other and function as binaries that create an up and a down. And the thing about binaries is they produce a reference frame. So that's what you need to understand. When you have a binary, you have a compare and contrast, which creates a reference frame, which is to break symmetry. And this concept is foundational to a lot of what I talk about on my podcast and what I will be talking about in subsequent videos. Because like I said before, the reason why I'm creating this channel is not only because of my research interests, but at some point in time, my philosophical, spiritual, and academic interests all aligned 
once I became an information theorist. It was the studying of information theory that collapsed a lot of ideas into a single concept, and that is information. And so this binary that I'm creating here is part of the foundation of how I'm going to reconceptualize all of reality using nothing but the concept of information, which is the purpose of my podcast. And so if you want to listen to these ideas communicated in this video in a more casual conversational format, please check out my episodes of the podcast, The Space of Speculations and its algebra all the way down, where I give more examples of the nature of symmetry and how it relates to your everyday life while also breaking down my paper, A Differential Geometric Approach to Quantum Ignorance Consistent with Entropic Properties of Statistical Mechanics. And before I leave this video, I want to tease one thing. Not only does this binary function for information and entropy or symmetry and broken symmetry, it's also synonymous with the idea of space and no space. That is, I'm going to reconceptualize the concept of space in terms of information. So please like this video and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends so that you don't miss out as I unravel all of reality using nothing but the concept of information. And with that, stay turtling my friends. Peace.